Good morning. Good Saturday morning. Uh, the Doug Wright Show. Uh, Saturday morning. Uh, the Doug Wright Show. Welcome. I just made that up as a fucking as a jingle. Maybe it'll <clears throat> just keep it later. How you doing, motherfuckers? Good morning. Get your asses in here, motherfuckers. I want a full room. Tell people what's happening. I'm about to read an article that will chill you. CNN, I'm going to read the whole thing right chill. About to get down with this. How y'all doing? So I started off. I know you saw it. Y'all see that shit, that little clip I put in about 30 second clip from Boston Legal where they talked about how abortion has served society by reducing the crime rate in specific sectors. And do you know, you, you see how he danced around that shit, man? That was some fucking, I mean, that was some shit. The dude, the dude did it. James Spader did his job there. Because he said it so deftly, so, so, I mean, it was right there, man. He just thread the needle through the racism and the fucking just, and he just said, you know, abortions are just keeping the black population down. I love it. And he said it just like that, but he used different words. Y'all look at that fucking clip. I put it everywhere. I put it on my Facebook, I put it on Twitter, I put it on TikTok, I put it on Instagram. I put that 30 seconds right there so you could know the structure of the destruction. Y'all better fucking wait. Did you see this shit? Motherfucker said Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade may, in fact, have reduced the crime rate in America. I mean, you take those low-income families, single mothers of the 70s, who instead of having those children, aborted them. And so, we did not have the criminals of the 90s. This is what the motherfucker said in front of 13, 14 million people. In the fourth season of one of the most popular shows, William Shatner, James Spader, an exceptional actor beyond measure. And the motherfucker let those words slide out of his mouth. Somebody wrote that shit, man. David E. Kelly. You got to pay attention to the names of the motherfuckers that are programming motherfuckers, man. If you're gonna look at these black mirrors, look at the credits. Look at the fucking credits. If you're gonna look at them, put us in a fucking caricature. If you're going to look at the whole show, do yourself at least the service of getting the fucking names of the people who determine what we look like in front of millions of people. You don't know what I'm saying? Same show, Clarence, a lawyer, came into the show as a transvestite cross-dresser. Or just a cross-dresser. Yeah, black. Black. That sets the tone throughout a swath of this country, one fucking hour at a time, week in, week out, reinforcing this brother in a dress pretending to be a woman doing shows, yet still maintaining a law practice. That's how they want us, not a strong black male figure on the show like me. Look one of these motherfuckers in the eye and ask them what the fuck they looking at. No, 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 no. No. The black people they want portrayed in front of the American people are nothing like me. All right. Good start. I think so. All right. Let's do this shit. 625 in the morning. 9 a.m. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. Listen to this. Ladies and gentlemen... It is on the Twitterverse. Here it is. This is. I'm going to read this whole article. It's a long article. Listen. Read along. I have put the link in my Twitter. Here we go. CNN. Dated today. Let's begin. A slavery petition was the latest racist incident at this school. 
Dateline today, Newsflash CNN updated 8.57 a.m. Eastern Time, October 9th, 2021. Let's begin. Kansas City, nearly two weeks after a racist petition to bring back slavery circulated at her daughter's school, Julie Stutterheim is still angry. How you like that starting? You like that shit? Whoa. You know what? That's worth doing again. Shall we just repeat the first line? Let's see the, the uh, you know, the mental state of children in Kansas City in 2021. Let me go. Nearly two weeks after a racist petition to, I'm just going to pause right there. A petition was circulated to bring something back. Let me tell you what it was. Nearly two weeks after a racist petition to bring back slavery circulated at her daughter's school. Julie Stutterheim is still angry. Oh, Miss Stutterheim, are you upset, motherfucker? Oh, really? You, you sound like a person that would take that personally, Miss Stutterheim. Frau Stutterheim just don't like the fact that slavery, a petition for slavery is being circulated at your daughter's school and you are angry. I understand where your anger comes from. Uh, no, actually, I, I fucking don't. But let's move on. She says it was yet another example of a racist incident at Park Hill South School in the suburbs of Kansas City, Missouri. Motherfucker. Don't write that like Kansas City, Missouri. Kentucky Red Legs, Missouri. Do you know what they think of us in Missouri? Okay, moving on. She was very upset about it. My daughter's Ethiopian. Okay, now I'm thoroughly confused. So Julie Stutterheim has a daughter who is Ethiopian. <sighs> let me just let me shake that one off, guys. Hold on. I, of course, retract what I said regarding her name. We'll figure it out. Uh, her, <clears throat> her daughter has encountered first has encountered racism firsthand. Stutterheim says. The more she talked about this, the more upset she got. Stutterheim did what any concerned parent would do and reached out to the school to find out what happened. Miss Stutterheim is a white lady. It's not a big deal, but she is. So her daughter must be a, an, an Ethiopian. So through her adoption of an Ethiopian child, she's, I suppose, experiencing... The black experiencing through proxy? Is this what? Why do they have to adopt motherfuckers that look like us? What is that? I'm going to stop for a minute. Let me tell you something, man. I see this chick. Actress. Y'all know who the fuck I'm talking about. She done decided to adopt two of our children. Cherise Theron has decided to put our children in dresses and parade them about Hollywood, telling us that these children, this South African motherfucker, decided to adopt our black princes. She has them traipsing around in dresses, and she tells everyone who asks that this is their choice. And dear God, if you can see the smug fucking look on this woman's face as she has our children in what I consider to be some rather attractive skirts, I suppose. I don't understand the mentality of these motherfuckers that want to adopt us. Is it some primordial need to enslave us again? Because for God's sake, the topic here is a fucking slave petition. Any way they can own us, they will. And you know what they do to us when they adopt us? They rip our mental asses asunder. Dear God, can you imagine the black child growing up in a white family having that shit 
force fed down their goddamn throats day in, day out. They don't even know who the fuck they are, and you motherfuckers know it. The biggest travesty in the world is one of these motherfuckers adopting our children. It's an erasure of blackness, and it really pisses me off. Maybe I need a little sip of coffee. So, she adopted an Ethiopian. What she found was that an increasingly familiar scenario was unfolding at her child's school. Catch everybody up. We're reading an article on CNN about a, an interesting little petition that went around in a school in Missouri that encouraged, nay, petitioned to bring back slavery. So, I'm going to continue fucking reading. In one, some parents, some white parents were telling school leaders that lessons about race make white students feel bad. Hold on. Let me catch my breath. Hold on. Just give me a fucking I'm a, Hold on. I'm going to read the entire paragraph because I think I missed something. What? She found Miss Stutterheim, the person adopting a black person all the way in Ethiopia. I know she just feels she's just so, oh, do you know, let me tell you something. I'm going to stop there too. You know, when you, when you adopt a black child over in Ethiopia, you ain't doing nothing but high siding. You ain't doing nothing but want to put on front street how wonderful you are. Because that's something you got to explain every and every day you got to explain that and you tell the people that you adopted this Ethiopian child in order to elicit that feeling of admiration you want people to see you just so I, look you can take that disingenuous goddamn bullshit somewhere else there are white children you can adopt all over the fucking world partner the psychology of you picking a motherfucker that looks like us lets me know. One, you're guilty as fuck. Oh, yeah, you are racist for real. You're so racist that in an effort to stave your racistness off, you reached out to the fucking world and grabbed a black child, put him right in your house to raise him. And that itself you believe, makes you not a racist. But we see right through your fucking ass. Don't you adopt our children. Don't adopt our children. Don't. I'd rather have the state raise the child. For anybody that fucking asks, you really want me to, do you want to go there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orphanages, I'll run them. Black orphanages, black administrators, black teachers, black doctors, all of it. Oh, yeah, let's get it right, motherfuckers. Don't adopt them. We'll do it. We'll do it. We see what you think of us. We see what your children think of us. Do you understand this article and what it says? What are they teaching their kids that they should circulate a petition in a school to bring back slavery? What's on their mind, folks? What's on their minds, folks? Don't you believe that what I am reading is a projection of what is being thought of? Do you not understand? Understand? Do you get it? Listen to me. They circulated a petition in the school to bring back slavery. Where's that coming from? Where's that coming from? Where's that coming from? A fucking petition? Where's it coming from? What's on their mind, motherfuckers? Y'all walking around with a shit-eating grin on your faces, looking, wondering about everything they put in front of us. That's what's on our mind. You know what's on our mind? What? They put on our minds if we let them. 
But what's on their mind? Well, let's continue. What she found was that an increasingly familiar scenario was unfolding in her child's school. Across the United States, there are two diametrically opposed conversations about race going on at the same time. In one, some white parents are telling school leaders that the lessons about race make white students feel bad. And in the other, there's the racism that is actually happening in the schools. District leaders condemned the petition. Did they condemn the petition? Oh, wasn't that nice of them? So you mean the written piece of paper with people's names under the auspices of bringing back slavery is something that you've determined you'll condemn. Well, fuck you very much. District leaders condemned the petition and Jeanette Coward, an interesting name, Park Hill superintendent released a video message days after Stutterheim started asking questions. Wow. <clears throat> Quote, unquote, going forward, we have two options. This is her talking. We can react or we can respond. Bitch, that, please, that was just ridiculous. <laughs> that was ridiculous. We can either react or we can respond. What do you mean you can react or you can respond? Listen, don't tell me the, your options. I don't care about your options. What you gonna do? You know, empty ass nonsense. We got two options. We can react. Or we, this isn't a football game, partner. This ain't the fucking bottom of the ninth and you ain't the coach. I don't like that. We are choosing to respond. Well, thanks. We made a decision to create a long-term solution that best needs the me. Oh, fuck, fuck, yada, 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 yada. Nothing, 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 nothing. What can we do? These The students did it. They're grown. Most of them are armed. And I'm not really sure that some of them are even children. Some of them look grown. Motherfuckers got beards. Motherfuckers walking around with full bodies, driving cars, on the phone, spending their money on their, from their fucking goddamn YouTube account where they make $300,000 a year. You, a teacher making twenty six, ain't going to be able to tell that motherfucker to not sign a petition. Did I do it? I did. I did. Yeah. So going forward, we do nothing. But I'll read what she said. Going forward, we have two options. We can react... Uh, or we can respond. We're choosing to respond. And what are they going to do? Uh, they're going to create a long-term solution that best meets the needs of our students, our staff, our families, and our community. That's what she's going to do. Uh, let me read it again. Uh, <clears throat> we're choosing to respond. Here's how they're going to respond to the petition that was circulated to bring back slavery that children signed. This is what they're going to do. They're going to create a long-term solution that best meets the needs of our students, our staff, our families, and our communities. Shit, I could have wrote that. There he, it flows. It says absolutely nothing. You ain't going to do shit. What you're going to do is hope this shit passes without incident. Part of that response is the district search for an expert advisor on race and inclusion. Stop. The inclusion part. Stop. It's a falsehood. Stop. It's not real. Stop. It's disingenuous. Stop. You don't want us included. So whatever expert you're going to get to advise you on that, probably wasting money. Yet for yet many white students across the United States have pushed back against these efforts and conflated it with the debate over what critical, critical race theory is and isn't. What critical race theory is and isn't. Boy, don't run. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't run from your history. Don't run from your past. You're not going to escape it. No, no, no. You can talk about not talking about it in class. Fuck it. Take it out of the history books. You know what's going to be in your goddamn face all day, every day? Us. You're not going to be able to erase what you've done. Mm-mm. There'll be none of that. Because as long as we're here, we're in your face reminders of your history. 
You want to stop talking about it in high school because your kids are uncomfortable. Is that caucasity or is that caucasity? I mean, folks, they want to no longer teach the kids that slavery was actually relevant in the historical confines of the United States creation. That which we know is an absolute fucking lie. Slavery built this country. And we're a constant reminder of that fucking fact in their goddamned faces every day. And now, well, some of us just ain't shutting the fuck up. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm done. So, Park Hill is no different in doing this. At a recent school board meeting, Sally Roller echoed an opinion that many white parents share. Here we go. I would like to, quote unquote, I would like to address critical race theory, sometimes called culturally responsive teaching. History is what it is, whether we like it or not, and should not be rewritten. I fear this would cause more division and racism by causing others to be seen by skin color rather than the in other individual personal qualities of the person. Where do you think you are at, Miss Roller? What country do you think you reside in? I mean, you 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 don't want people to see be seen by their skin color, rather by their individual personal qualities of person. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be awesome. Critical race theory is not taught in the K twelve K through twelve curriculum. Here's a national date. Nicole Price is the CEO of Lively Paradox Professional Training and Coaching. She's been hired in schools throughout Missouri and Kansas. She says that you generally gets a phone call after something racist happens. You, you, wait, let me, hear, let me address this shit. Listen to me, folks. I don't understand why these motherfuckers are dancing around themselves. Isn't that cute? They talk about what they do without actually identifying themselves of the culprit. Isn't that fucking awesome? She talks about this occurrence when something happens. She gets a phone call when something when something racist happens. You mean when one of you loses your fucking composure in public. And you can't seem to keep within you the racist, hateful sentiment you have for Negroes for the sole purpose that we are here. You mean that? Stop calling it this obtuse thing, this thing that doesn't really attach itself to fucks that look like you. That's the problem! This shit! Nicole Price, the CEO of Lively Paradox Professional Training and Coaching. She's been hired in schools throughout Missouri and Kansas. Yeah. She says that she... She says, what kind of white dudes are in Missouri and Kansas, folks? Who do you think you'll encounter at 2 o'clock in the morning in the countryside of Missouri or Kansas? What police officer do you think you'll come into communication with? Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, you may not make it. Are you serious? <laughs> Let me just put it like this. I will never go to certain states. Kentucky, no need. Missouri, no need. Kansas, unnecessary. Texas, hell no. Oregon, oh, no. See, if you go down the line, it becomes evident through these sundowner towns and sundowner states just how welcome we are. They're circulating petitions to bring back our enslavement. Don't you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, motherfuckers? Let's continue. Am I surprised? That's the question I get most. The lady that gets the calls about racist activity. She puts it when something racist happens. 
Can you kind of expand on that? Just when something racist happens, I want to, I want to, can we just, can we, uh, let's elongate that and let's dissect that. Of the calls that you receive, how many involve folks that look like me as the culprit? Can I get the stats? Something racist, I just want the stats. You get the numbers? Because I'm looking at, you know, you kind of watered that down. When some, generally I get a phone call after phone call, I, after something racist, you mean after one of you motherfuckers loses your goddamned minds? You mean when one of you motherfuckers hears music coming out of a brother's car and you can't resist but and all in the fucking car because the music, though, the sound, though, that did it. You see black people all day. Something cut you off. Maybe look at you stupid. Shit. It's the music. Is that what did it? That was the straw that broke the, the camel's back culminating in the young man's murder. Is that why? I mean, what the, I'm a little confused. You mean you get the call when one of them sees a sign in a window and decides to shoot up trucks, stab a truck's tires, and paint graffiti all over it? You, you get that call. I understand. I feel, you know. And she asks, she's asked, am I surprised? That's the question I get the most. I bet money that ain't the question you get the most. Let me start asking you some questions. I guarantee you. You'll have a clear understanding of what the fuck I want to know, chick. Anyway. She says, she said she's uh, disappointed, but never surprised. She's disappointed. The lady that takes in racist incidents and activity in that particular area, disappointed, but never surprised. I spend my life trying to make sure that education is at the forefront because, well, that's how we know that we can help to fix some of this. And naturally, I don't get it. These days, Nicole Price's job is more challenging than ever. After one Missouri school district hired her to lead a session, the school board got threats, she said. And here's the reason why. Miss Price is a black woman. Trying to get along. Look at us trying to get along. She says that this is the only way that we can... Look at that. Ever, ever reaching and extending to our oppressors the olive branch of peace. Always looking to these motherfuckers to fucking change. Look at us just as spiritual, just as peaceable, just wanting to stop the madness. But from our standpoint, we cannot. It is not up to us to stop them from their conduct. I commend Nicole, I do. But we've been fighting this same fight, running this same fucking hamster wheel for years. These folks aren't going to change, I believe. This is why the kingdom is upon us. Only God Almighty can bring about the change we wait for. You know that. Ain't you tired of treading the fucking water? Here she's in the treading water, treading the water. Treading. These folks think, you know what? In the hamster wheel, you jump off the hamster wheel. You think you're in a different place. You're not. Jump back on the hamster wheel. You run, 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 run. Jump off all excited because of the effort you've put to get somewhere you're not going. That's Negroes in America. I encourage Miss Price to get off the hamster wheel. She had a driver, oh wait, she had a driver and asked for extra security because they threatened her. She came in to, to, to educate people. Price was going to the school to give a keynote presentation on radical empathy. As Republican lawmakers across the United States have fueled the debate over critical race theory and inclusive curriculum, Democratic lawmakers like State Senator Cindy Holscher are pushing back in Kansas. I think the racist incidents have gone up. And I say that because of what I hear from my kids. That the environment is a little more tense in our school. There's more hatred out there over the past couple of years. Who's the fucking hatred coming from? Why don't y'all self-identify? I'm waiting for one of them. I'm waiting for one of them. To cut, I mean, one of them that's prominent, like state senators, Cindy. I would love for one of them to just look in the camera and say, "Listen, certain of some white folks got a problem. We need to uh, deal with it." 
And they're walking around here. They're acting mad. They're crazy. And I just don't understand. And when I'm, I'm talking about us, I'm not, you know, we're going to, we're going to get this out. Now, enough of this shit. Everybody talks about, uh, oh, incidents, racist incidents have gone up. You hear it from the kids. There's more hatred. Who's hating? Who's hating? Black people don't hate. So who is doing the hating? Who is increasing the racist incidents? Why don't you identify yourselves as the culprits? You, this is why it will never work. They can't bring it to themselves to punish themselves. It will, they'll never, ever, 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 ever change without God Almighty coming here and putting a stop to this madness. I'm sorry. This is bullshit. Do you understand this is happening in 2021 that a bunch of students put a position together to bring back the enslavement of Negroes? And they're not really finishing the sentence, you know? They don't want to really get too specific, but that's what they're doing. They're talking about bringing back slavery for Negroes. What do you think they're talking about? Enslaving themselves? They're petitioning to bring back slavery. Who the fuck you think they talking about? You still grinning? Y'all still walking around this motherfucker grinning and shit? Why you got that fucking grin on your goddamn face? Children are circulating petitions to put you back in chains. And you got that fucking grin on your face. You are a happy and content nigga. Let me ask you something. Jay-Z. I bring him out because very successful, enterprising, young black man taking advantage of everything. I know he's crossed over, but let him cross. It's his choice. But Jay-Z. Y'all gonna put him back in chain? What? What? You petitioning to put, to put Negroes back in chain? So... Oprah, she going to? Huh? How do you inform us? You going to send us a letter? Are we supposed to report to a specific place, corral, and await further instructions? Motherfuckers, where are you? Is it, is it beginning to become evident where you are in this country? Is it beginning to become evident to Negroes, brothers, sisters, who you are in this country? Am I not at least piquing your interest to discover more? Or do you just accept the fucking program? Let's continue. This school district in Kansas City isn't the only one grappling with how to talk about race and racism. How to, what the fuck do you mean? What's the struggle to talk about race and racism? You enslaved black people, tortured them, beat them, burned them, castrated them, hung them. You emancipated them, continued to abuse them, incarcerate them. You infused the communities with drugs. You're unapologetic, unabashedly, unashamed. And every day you practice and promote, maintain, foster, and foment white supremacy as a rule of fucking thumb. There. I'm done. I think I've saved us a lot of time and money. Yes? No? In Iowa, the Republican governor, Kim Reynolds, signed a law this summer that strictly dictated what teachers can tell students about race and America. Oh, really? <laughs> they get nervous, ain't they? Y'all, come on now. They get nervous. Something's coming. Y'all need to stop. They ain't never worried about this shit before. What are we talking about? They ain't never worried about this shit before. What is we doing? What is we doing? They never had no problem. All of a sudden, now they got an issue. Something's coming. Something's coming. Something coming. The kingdom approaches. We Listen. Look at them. They want to bring slavery back. Their children are projecting what they're talking about at home. I know, right? And you know what they do? They walk amongst you, these parents of those children, 
and they smile in your fucking face. You understand what's going on? Do you get that? You Do you understand? These children put together a piece of paper espousing the, the, the desire to put Negroes back in chains and circulated it in a public school in the heart of America. What's going on at home? What they talking about at the house, y'all? See, y'all seem to lose focus. You lose focus. Let me tell you why. They're experts at projecting a falsehood. It's what they do. They're experts at projecting a fucking falsehood. And we need to be conscious of that. We need to understand that all they present to us, all the flowery love and hugs and kisses and thoughts and prayers, all of that masks some sort of sinister malevolence within them. Of something they simply cannot release. And you all fucking know it. You need to stop. Let me tell you something. Y'all look at me. Look at Doug now. Hey, what's up? Been talking 30 years on the phone. Tell them order, right? Let me tell you something. <laughs> you tell me that they are not racist, give me 10 minutes, baby. <laughs> Look, after 10 minutes with me, and if I tell you they're not racist, you can believe they're, they don't have a racist bone in their goddamn body. <laughs> or at least none that I can reach, which is nearly fucking impossible. Because I'm going to cut through their fucking bullshit. You can believe it, man. You put them in front of me, and you tell me that these folks have claimed that they don't, they don't hold racist sentiment against Negroes. I will guarantee you, after 10 minutes with me, you'll know. We've banned... Critical race theory and any curriculum or training that teaches that the United States or Iowa is fundamentally racist or sexist. This coming from Republican Governor Kim Reynolds, who signed into law what teachers can tell students about. So she has sanctioned the lie. She signed into law the falsehood, the permission to just. Be selective with the facts so that no one's uncomfortable, you know, no one that, that looks like Kim. That's some bullshit. Let me tell you something. They're not going to make it. Let's just keep it 100, y'all. They ain't going to make it. Whatever it is, that whatever clock they're trying to beat, whatever history they're trying to erase, whatever shit they're trying to rewrite, they're not going to make it. The creator had a head start. He st you should have started this probably back in the 50s. I mean, creator's a ways off. You know, back then, now he's closer, and you trying to beat the clock. Stop. Y'all need to stop. It's not going to work. It's not. I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do. you trying to get your conscience clear because kingdom's coming, and it ain't going to work. It's not going to work. So y'all can sign into law all the forgetfulness you want. You don't want the world to know what you did to us? <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> so it's high time we forgot about that whole slave era. Is that it? However, the Holocaust, that will remain ad infinitum into history beyond measure. Shut your fucking mouth. So, Governor Reynolds, you've banned the truth. You don't want... Nobody to know what you did. You know, it's an interesting thing. I mean, if you're going to do that, at least, at least have the manners to tear down the fucking slave quarters that still fucking pepper the sides of roads all across the South. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna just take away the truth, do me a favor. Bulldoze the fucking evidence, motherfuckers. 
You know, if you're not going to teach it in school, don't leave a place where the students can afterwards go visit your denial. Disingenuous motherfuckers. I sometimes they believe, I believe that they keep our struggle in our face just to let them know what could happen. You feel me? You feel me on that shit? They are enamored with their enslavement of Negroes. Don't you get it twisted, motherfuckers? Are you fucking for real? Do you remember when that cook, she fucking, she has these fucking balls where people dress up in Civil War era. They romanticized that portion of their history. They love the fact that they owned us. They think it's cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They spend days in the woods dressing up as red and blue soldiers from the Civil War. Who does that? <laughs> Every one of them needs to be fucking locked. When you catch thousands of white folks in the woods dressing up as Confederate soldiers, you have a problem. There is an issue. No, no. I'm not, and I'm not a nerd to try to invite a brother to the Civil War reenactment. Have you lost your mind? I don't want to go, but I appreciate the offer. And I want you to think about the guys that go there and choose the Confederacy. And then go back to work on Monday looking you in the face saying good morning. Tennessee also has a new law banning history lessons that might make the students feel discomfort because of their race. So what you're telling me is the white students in the class, you're concerned with their fucking comfort levels and not opposed, not not with the truth of history. You're, this is, I mean, come on, man. Don't you know where you are now? This is what's going on in this country. They want to remove the, the truth so that their white children can be fucking comfortable. Meanwhile, my black children can't go out and even think about getting stopped for a taillight because they may not make it out alive. You see how they're concerned with their children, but don't give a fuck about ours? Fuck their ass! You understand? See how fucking concerned they are about our their children while ours go murdered in the streets by reckless, scared, coward motherfucking police? Yeah, boy, I tell you, I don't want the children to feel discomfort in the safety of the classroom as opposed to the discomfort my child might feel on a simple traffic stop. Boy, I tell you, mm, the lengths they will go to to be comfortable. Are you serious? Are you serious? You really want to be comfortable, huh? You don't want your children to hear the truth about your grandfather, huh? How dare you? What an insult. The very idea that this is being done tells you the direction they're moving in. Don't get it twisted, partner. You ain't at home. Don't get it twisted. You ain't at home, and they telling you you ain't at home, ain't they? We'll not have any more talk about this. <laughs> who's running shit? Now you know who's running shit, too. It's a national story. White parents are up in arms and laws are changing. Can black parents do that? Where you at in America? Who you think you are, huh? Who the fuck you think you are in America? Really? Really? Black child, black parents see something in a school that they don't like white children are doing. Do they change law? Does the governor immediately get to work and sign into law something that benefits and satisfies those black parents immediately? No. So you can shut your fucking mouth. When I say don't grin, there's a reason I'm telling you to get that fucking grin off your faces. This is happening, folks. Right in front of you. You know what they're offering you up as a distraction? All the whap you can fucking eat. Go on. 
Tennessee also has a new law banning history lessons that might make students feel discomfort because of their race. Yet, in, in August, sheriff's deputies in the suburban Nashville were called in after a white football player threatened a black player on social media while wearing a Ku Klux Klan hood. So they don't want the truth taught in their high schools, but their high schoolers threaten people with clan shit. And you wonder why I tell you, pay attention to where you're at. This is the children. The children reflect and project what the parents are talking and saying at home. The family is what creates this children, that village that they have, that they don't give access to. Anyone don't look like them. What are they telling these motherfucking fucking evil children? That's an evil motherfucker. You on social media, you wearing a Ku Klux Klan, that means you're as ignorant as, as hell, because you don't know the history of what you're doing. You know what's interesting? The Klan probably wouldn't have him. That's what's funny, because he probably done already fucked a black woman. Oh! Yeah, I said it. Yeah, don't fucking play. The Klan wouldn't have this same dude that threatened the black player. The Klan wouldn't have him. <laughs> they got standards. Trust and believe, son. Trust and look, I ain't talking about that bullshit. I was born in 65. I mean the Klan. The Klan. The Klan. The real Klan? I've been next to them when I was like six, seven, eight. The real Klan? The real Klan? They will send a cold chill down the back of your spine you will never forget. When you are surrounded by men who have no proclivity regarding your existence one way or another, and you may very well not survive this interaction, when you feel the energy of evil, boy, you never forget that shit. So these clowns that walk around wearing a Ku Klux Klan a hood, let me tell you something, and I mean this, I mean this, a Klan member would scare the shit out of that boy. That same boy that did all that and threatened a black player on social media, with, a Klan member would scare his ass straight. He'd come away from that experience without a racist bone in his body because let me tell you, the real Klan they don't do that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <clears throat> An increase in incidents. Holcher, who lives in Overland Park, says fears of critical race theory is getting in the way of schools dealing with other incidents. After a photo surfaced of a racist homecoming proposal at a nearby high school. Y'all remember that one, don't you? The school condemned the image, but three weeks before that, a father condemned efforts to expand race education in the Olathe schools. So they want their cake and they want to eat it too. They don't want to feel bad about what their grandfathers did. And at the same time, they don't want to really let go of what their grandfathers did. We are in trouble, motherfuckers. You don't get that? Y'all don't understand what the fuck's going on with these people is not normal? I'm reading it. What are you fucking talking about? History is history. Who the fuck? Damn, y'all feeling, you look, y'all feeling some kind of way about the truth? Then something is awry. Something's, something's a foul. They, 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 look, folks, they're, listen to me. Something's coming. Something's coming, man. Something's coming and they're preparing. They're scared. They're frightened. They're terrorized of blackness. They do all this and talk about somebody stealing their country. What is actually going on? I mean, a certain segment of them is shaking their fists at the air saying somebody is replacing them. And yet, with the other portion and segment of their society, they just don't want to hear the truth about their part in slavery. A generation ago, these fucks were breathing. It ain't no history. A few years ago, fuck y'all talking about. You don't want to hear it? Really? So you don't want to hear it at the same time. You want to you wanna dress up in clan uniform. You want your children to petition and bring back slavery. You want all these things. 
You seem confused, motherfuckers. I tell you to stay the fuck out their goddamn faces for a reason. Look at what we're dealing with. What? Look at what we're dealing with. This is the heart of America, folks. <laughs> hey, if I were black, I'd be picking cotton. But I'm not, so I'm picking you for the prom. Who thought, who said that was, it's funny? Is that funny? The school condemned the image. But the father, father in the same school district doesn't want to really expand on race education. So you want your children to just be as ignorant and stupid and devoid of common sense as possible when it comes to your fucking history. And you don't want to hear about what you've done. Coward motherfuckers. That's what they are. They're just cowards. Straight, and they're getting more and more scared. And let me tell you why I'm calling them cowards. Because they've killed off all their brave. How many wars do we go back? Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq. Want to keep going? By Beirut, what? Keep going? Sandinistas, keep going? What? Vietnam, Korea, World War II, World War I, Civil War. All decency in the goddamn dirt. And what we're left with are fucks like Donald Trump. All the rich and the wealthy pushed the poor and the noble to the front lines and all that goodness gone. Now you're stuck with rich, privileged white guys that are scared to go in service. You motherfuckers killed your own country. And all we got to do is sit back and watch you implode. What? Oh, they didn't do that? They're not losing their fucking minds? That's not happening? I'm here to state <clears throat> my opposition to DEI, critical race theory or the derivatives thereof being instructed, indoctrinated, or even hinted at in the school district, said John Highfill at the Olaf public school meeting board meeting last month. Every piece of this propaganda that will reveal itself in the false doctrines of white fragility, white rage, white privilege, and the like is just that. False. Seriously? So, let me understand this. You think white fragility is false? Please, read some of the comments. You think white rage is false? <laughs> some of the comments. You think white privilege is false? Some of the comments. These motherfuckers really, they, you know, this is why we're in a bad trajectory. This is why the, this is why, you know, where we're heading is not good. They're losing their fucking minds. They can't seem to deal with themselves.